Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to another game reaction circling Seattle sports here. Uh, today, we will be going over the Seahawks win against the Cleveland Browns here in their throwback uniform. So I had to put the throwback colors on the graphics and the Seahawks throwback logo. The jerseys looked excellent. Uh, feel free to leave a comment. Let me know what you thought of the jerseys. I know the kind of the unanimous. Uh, well, I don't know if it's unanimous, but the overwhelming uh, reaction has been very positive to these. And uh, they did announce that the Seahawks, when they play Dallas, I believe it's four weeks from now in Dallas, uh, that they'll be wearing the throwbacks once again. So that's exciting. Uh, it's good to see them used more than once, considering how good they look and considering how positive the reaction was to them. Um, they, yeah, they, they looked excellent in this game. And Seattle got a win in them. Uh, so maybe some good luck there with the win. You can see obviously in the bottom here uh, and the 49ers loss or this as they're currently on a three game losing streak falling to the Bengals in San Francisco um, the same day as this uh, Seattle moves into the top spot in the NFC West. So that's pretty impressive. Uh, it's been very interesting to see how this has gone, you know, throughout the course of the season so far, obviously it's early on, but you know, there was so much reaction uh, after the week one loss to the Rams. Uh, and as the 49ers began their season so strong. And now as we get through the the, the thick of the schedule in the middle of it, um, it's kind of cooling off. Teams are adjusting, so on and so forth. So uh, this was a, this was an interesting game. Uh, you know, it started off strong in that first quarter. Uh, the first Two Cleveland drives are a punt and a fumble. Uh, the first three Seattle drives, two touchdowns, and then a field goal. Uh, Cleveland was really struggling. So, you know, two turnovers in that first quarter. Um, excuse me. Uh, in that first half, I should say. Uh, a fumble and then an interception. You know, P.J. Walker was playing this game. Deshaun Watson was not active. Um and it was it was it's really positive to see the Seahawks start this game the way that they did, considering how worried I was about Miles Garrett wrecking this game for the Seahawks. Uh, and you have to give credit to this team's offensive line. Uh, the Browns did end up getting three sacks on the day. Miles Garrett only got one. Um, but I mean, that's a feat in and of itself. And Miles Garrett didn't ruin the game for you. So that's a positive to look at. Uh, and especially considering that Phil Haynes was an inactive for this game, Abraham Lucas is still trying to get off of injured reserve. Uh, so I'll, I'll take that. Uh, uh, Jason Peters played his first game as a Seahawk in this one, uh, actually helped play right tackle on the final drive of the game for Seattle. Uh, to help ward off Miles Garrett, so that was a big factor in this game. Um, and just a really, really, a really positive start. And really positive end with that final drive. Seattle's offense clicked, got big plays in that first quarter, uh, and took advantage of the short field, something that you need to do against a good defense. Um, and then they did the same thing uh, on that game winning drive. Geno Smith leads the game winning drive uh, at the end of the game. Under the final two minutes, he had two minute drill, uh, gets the big plays. Uh, and finishes it off with a touchdown to rookie wide receiver Jackson Smith and Jigba. DK Metcalf had an excellent block on the wide receiver screen. Uh, great big play there uh, to set that up. So that was it was it was nice strong win for the Seahawks in this one. Um, you know, I, I talked about it in our recap articles and our good, bad, and ugly article. Uh, Seattle had chances to further this lead. You know, I talked about it again. Uh, you know, the first three drives you get points. After that, uh, after those first three drives, Seattle's next uh, few were punt, punt, interception, interception. No, punt, punt, interception, punt, interception, punt, punt. It was interesting. Seattle was running the ball well to begin this game. Kenneth Walker the third looked strong. Uh, Zach Charbonnet had a strong drive in the second half where he was getting the ball well. Um, and... In, in some of those drives where they stalled out uh, that I just listed off for you, they got away from running the football. Uh, there was a drive late in this one uh, when Seattle punted. I want to see if I get this right. Yeah. Kenneth Walker runs, Zach Charbonnet run, uh, passes Zach Charbonnet, Zach Charbonnet run, uh, getting down the field. And then 
Seattle getting into Cleveland's territory. Um, gets a false start penalty from Will Disley. Geno Smith in completion. Uh, Miles Garrett gets his sack. Uh, and then the Seahawks have to eventually punt because they get moved out of field goal range. So you were running the ball well, and then you start passing it. The penalty doesn't help. It's unfortunate. We'll get to penalties in a minute. Uh, but overall, could have made this one a little bit uh, less stressful for Seattle fans. But a win's a win. Cleveland's got a really good defense. Their offense was more than capable, and they have their weapons on that side of the ball as well. So we'll take it. On the offensive side of the ball, keeping with that, I went with Tyler Lockett as my offensive player of the game. Feel free to let me know who your offensive player of the game would be. I thought about Jackson Smith and Jigba in this one uh, with his game-winning touchdown. But Tyler Lockett, I, I say it here in these game reactions and in our Circling Seattle Sports on Converge Media episodes, Tyler Lockett is just the perfect model of consistency for the Seahawks team. He was a big factor on the team's opening touchdown drive that they got getting down the field, reliable. You know, you can always count on his hands, knock on wood. Um, and just the ability to get open, you know, that separation is a big deal in this league. That's why Jake Bobo is with this team. He's able to get that separation on top of the fact that he can block as well. Uh, but Tyler Lockett, just just don't take this man for granted while we've got him. Um, the consistency that he plays with, how much of a big factor he is for this team, whether it's obviously on the field, but he's a positive locker room guy. Um, it's really impressive. So, you know, I, I continue to be amazed by Tyler Lockett. He's been my player of the game for, goodness, the last few weeks, I believe, well, several times over the last few weeks to, so far in the season. So just continue to be amazed by Tyler Lockett and the player that he is and how he continues to produce for this team. Uh, on the defensive side of the ball, you could have gone with a few different routes. Uh, you could have gone with Jamal Adams' head. I forgot to mention that. Jamal Adams, late in this game, uh, went up to block a P.J. Walker pass, and he used his, his throwback helmet to block that and get in the way. Uh, the ball went straight up in the air, and safety Julian Love was able to get the interception. That one was big. Uh, that one, yeah, was able to get the ball back uh, before Seattle's uh, game-winning drive. So that played a big factor as well. So he could have gone with Jamal Adams' helmet. We could have included his helmet right there. But Boya Mafe continues to impress through the course of this season. Didn't, in terms of numbers, last year produce, maybe as some people might have wanted, as he you know, grew as a rookie and learned. But in his second year, he's been very impressive. His QB hurries have been impressive throughout the course of the season so far. I think he's been in the top of the league in that aspect of things. Uh, but today, you know, the eight total tackles, three solo, a sack, a tackle for loss, four quarterback hits. You know, the tackles, fine. I don't necessarily need a pass rusher to get a ton of tackles. Uh, that More defensive line, linebackers, that sort of thing. But you see the sack, the tackle for loss the four quarterback hits getting in the backfield that all makes a difference. You know, that all affects the passing game. It helps out your secondary. That's why this Legion of boom was, uh, will help the Legion of boom. You know, you had that defensive line depth of bringing guys in guys who got to the quarterback, obviously uh, the two most famous being Michael Bennett and Cliff Averill, but you guys uh, like Chris Clemens, like red Bryant, uh, Tony McDaniel come in there and and affect things you know so bruce Irvin, obviously sorry bruce i apologize um and i'm not comparing those but i'm saying you know you're a good defensive line can help out a good secondary um and and mafe has been a part of that and it's been really exciting to see that uh see him play a factor in that see him grow and see him play a big role you know with uchenna nuosu out uh mafe and daryl taylor are gonna have to step up and and in this game they did to an extent so happy to see that happy to go with him there uh again you could have gone with a few of the people reek woolen had an interception in this game so i went with mafe in this one feel free to let me know who you would have picked from this game the penalty side of things seattle is the most penalized team in the national football league oh wait that's not penalty. That's turnovers. Yeah, turnovers. Uh, Geno Smith threw two picks in this game. Not great, uh, but considering that the Seahawks were able to put up 24 points against statistically one of the best, if not the best, defenses in the NFL, I can live with that. Uh, and again, with the continued uh, mis you know, retooling and moving around to the offensive line, it, it was, it's been said several times over the course of the season, not just by me, 
but by you know the NFL experts that some people prefer to listen to, um, that you know if you if you're gonna have one group be a consistent for a football team, you want it to be your offensive line for them to gel and to get that chemistry together. Seattle hasn't had that for years, uh, and they're not having it this year, despite having one of the better offensive lines that they've had over the course of the Pete Carroll tenure, and it's unfortunate, but. Uh, offensive line coach Dickerson and this group that they've had, you know, the depth that they've brought in, you know, bringing in Jason Peters has been huge. You got Evan Brown back this week. Uh, Jason Peters played. Anthony Bradford was in there. Stone Forsyth had the highest graded run grade by PFF across the entirety of the NFL. Maybe run the ball more. Um, so I'm not too stressed out about the turnovers. Uh Given the context, some people are going to see the Geno Smith throws two interceptions part and just lose it. I'm not really worried about Geno. Again, you're playing a tough defense and you're playing a tough defense next week when you go to Baltimore. So I wouldn't, you know, it's tough. It's tough. Okay. Context matters. Um, we go over to the statistics here and then you look at the penalties. Oof, that's not right. I'm sorry. I got that number wrong for you. Um, Penalties, Cleveland, Cleveland, Cleveland had four penalties. So that's four for 25 here on this side. Yes, he only got one sack, but, you know, uh, still nice to pressure the quarterback. The third down efficiency that you see there, the second at the top of your screen is not great. Seattle started off well on third down and then really went downhill over the course of that stretch where I talked about the punts and the interceptions. Not great. Time of possession, Cleveland dominated time of possession. Um you had to keep your defense out there for a while. And that's another testament to just how good this defense has been. We've talked about it since that Giants game. They've improved, improved. They played well in that game against Cleveland. They got the gritty stops when they needed to the week before this against the Cardinals. Uh, they handled business in this one. They got their offense, the ball back when they needed it most. Uh, and that's, you know, impressive. You know, it was, the, the commentators on the game talked about, you see these stats uh, for Cleveland and they should be winning. Yeah, it's because Seattle's defense really played a big role in this one. So, you know, that is it, uh, though, as we look ahead. I talked about it. This next game against Baltimore is not going to be easy. Uh, the Ravens are on a three-game winning streak. They've got a really tough defense. Um, and I'd, I'd like for Seattle to be able to play some complimentary football. That means running the football holding some time of possession because Lamar Jackson is really a guy that can wear a defense out as good as I've talked about that. The Seahawks defense has been Lamar Jackson causes any defense in the NFL trouble. Um, the last time we saw him, I think it was back in 2019 uh, certainly caused Seattle trouble. So, um, you know, it's, it's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough, but, you know, with how things are going for Seattle and how they're moving, um, I've got some confidence in them. They look strong. Uh, I don't guarantee wins. It's not what I do. I don't like doing that. Um, but uh, it's it should be good. So uh, next week, unfortunately, won't be able to use the throwback graphics. We'll have them back when the team plays Cleveland. But, yeah, big, big game against the Ravens next week. That's a 10 a.m. Pacific time kickoff, and that game is on Fox.